Your support makes this Miracle Channel program possible. Welcome to Insight. I'm Paul Arthur and looking forward to your calls from across North America. Toll free 1 888 2545. And as always, your emails welcome as we lead into Halloween here, talking once again about the occult. Are you okay with uh, your kids watching, uh, you know, suspenseful horror kind of movies, especially around uh, the Halloween time, right? That's, yeah, you, people like to get together. They think it's fun to watch some scary movies, okay? Uh, what do you think? Is it just good fun? Or um, is there a potential open door there again, even to lead people to experiment with the occult? You know how teens are. They tend to experiment, right? Well, the movie we're going to focus on today in particular is Twilight, uh, that vampire craze we've seen here for a couple of years now. Uh, but uh, uh, other movies out there, too, that uh, I think can have a similar effect. If you're not familiar with the, uh, the phenomenon, uh, it's a series of books on vampires and uh, now a movie series. And uh, certainly it was a number one at the box office uh, for, for, for quite a while. Uh, and there's more movies to come. It's basically about a romance between a 17-year-old girl who falls in love with a vampire, you know, totally plausible, right, <laughs> who possesses supernatural powers. And um, uh, strangely enough, there are some, actually some good moral points in the movie. It's not all bad, okay? Um, so uh, please hear me. But there's some um, disturbing issues as part of this uh, movie as well. Uh, the one that uh, got my attention was here, of course, with the violence and, and, and the underlying message that this girl can't seem to live without the love of this vampire, right? So you get this uh, um, obsession with the, with the vampire, just what your teens need to be obsessed with something, right? Uh, okay. So uh, again, are they just good, clean fun? some good morals being taught, or is this an issue for you as a parent? Uh, does it potentially encourage your youngsters to get involved in the occult or to try to uh, do some experiments, especially around Halloween? And uh, we can broaden this to talk about Halloween as well if you want. I mean, should Christians take part in any form? Yes or no? We talked about that yesterday, and I know we didn't get to all of your calls. So uh, you can uh, jump in here today with your thoughts on that. Uh, we're joined on the phone. Um, uh, are you still in Idaho, Steve? Yes, I am. All right. From Idaho, Steve Wolberg, uh, director of uh, White Horse Media and uh, best-selling author of uh, oh, a whole bunch of books. So the one we're talking about today is uh, uh, The Trouble with Twilight. Okay. And it's uh, available online at avoidtwilight.com. There it is on the screen. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, yeah, very interesting read. Uh, Steve, um, I mean, the teen interest in, in uh, uh, Stephanie Meyer's Twilight novels and the movies now of course uh, uh certainly soaring right um very harry potterish uh, i i guess uh, uh, competing with him i suppose uh, for uh, uh, the numbers uh, it's done very well yes there's no question about it when the first film came out in november of 2008 it brought in 70 million opening weekend the second film a year later brought in 140 million opening weekend and the third film that opened june 30 on a wednesday brought in $68.5 million in one day, making it the biggest Wednesday premiere opening of any film of all time. So mm -hmm. we're talking about something that is definitely, uh, to use Twilight terminology, eclipsed almost everything yeah. else. That's the name of the third book and the third movie. Right. And uh, I'm, you know, I want to clarify, Paul, and first, uh, again, thank you for having me on your program. Mm -hmm. I want to clarify that I'm not on a crusade to take a stake and stick it in the hearts of all those that love the Twilight series, <laughs> uh, you know, so, yeah, but I've things... got a lot of information that okay. is very, very important that Christians need yeah. to have their eyes open to the dangers hidden within this series. Yeah, and exactly. I think that's the key is that they're hidden. They're not necessarily overt because, I mean, uh, again, there's some good moral points about the book and about the uh, the movie. Um, so uh, we don't want to totally trash it. But um, it's like anything else, I guess. You know, you mix some poison along with the good stuff and uh, you don't know you've taken some poison, right? So, so what's your concern here? Uh, you obviously don't think it's just uh, all good, clean, harmless fun. No, I'm, I'm concerned about many different things. Uh, one of the things I'm concerned about is the fact that occultism is uh, laced within Twilight. Uh, in spite of the good features that you mentioned, Edward Cullen, he's a vampire, but he's a good vampire. He's a vegetarian vampire, which means he only drinks animal blood instead of human blood, and he does have good qualities. Uh, it's true that they don't have sex until after they get married yep. in the fourth book. So, yes, there are good things, but the occultism is woven throughout. Edward uh, Cullen is also also part of 
part of what's called the Olympic Coven, C-O-V-E-N, which mm-hmm. is a witchcraft term. Yep. He has psychic abilities. He reads minds. Uh, there's something called shape-shifting involved, which is an occult practice where humans turn into animals and back. And there's right. just a lot of uh, spooky things that are woven into Twilight. And mm-hmm. I can document this, that it is definitely contributing in, uh, toward interest in real vampirism and in the okay. occult among teenagers, and mm. that's my biggest concern. Right. I mean, I think there's a lot of people watching, uh, realistically, who are Christians, who are thinking, you know, hold on a second, uh, Steve, we, we like you, uh, we like watching Insight, but man, you're, you're over the top here, but you're overreacting. Um, uh, you know, so how would you respond to that, I guess? I mean, your concern is that this fiction somehow turns into reality, right? Yes, that's exactly right, and and it, it, that's what's happening. Uh, ABC News did a piece on this. 2020 did a piece. Fox News, Washington Post, recently the MSN Network, and we've got this article right on our website uh, on avoidtwilight.com. There's an article from MSN that talks about this bizarre teenage craze of how teenagers are actually more and more, they're biting each other. This is horrifying uh, parents, and health professionals are looking at this, and they're seeing that this trend is is taking hold and that it's becoming a real problem. And so just like Harry Potter uh, contributed to interest in Wicca, so the Twilight craze and other programs and movies like it are definitely contributing to uh, the rise of real vampire practices among teenagers. It's a fact, and those that don't well, think this is happening don't know what's really going on. Well, do you, do you have any stats on that at all? I'm, I'm really curious. I mean, uh, I, I guess so you're saying there are well, I guess we shouldn't say real vampires, but people who are wanting to become vampires, so they're biting people. You're saying this is actually some sort of a religious practice that is happening? Uh, are we seeing, do you have any stats on that? Yeah, well, it's hard to, it's like with Wicca, it's hard to actually have some hard numbers, but there's an article that came out in Australia, uh, a piece called, it was in the Sunday Mail, before one of the Twilight movies came out, it was called Fangs for Tickets, Vampire Film Friendly. This is also uh, linked on our website, and let me just read a little bit of this here. It says, Twilight okay. Hysteria is being blamed for a plethora of clans appearing in Australia. Groups of self-professed bloodthirsty vampires conduct rituals once a month across Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria. One member, 40-year-old Mark, claims to consume blood on a regular basis. He says, we're real, we're alive, we live and work in cities, we hold jobs, we're your next-door neighbor, we just we have families, we just have a different understanding, he said. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, if, you, if you Google teenage vampires, mm-hmm. I did this just the other day, and the top website that came up was offering advice to uh, to young people on the problems and issues that teen vampires face, like school parents coping with the awakening, how to enter the how to enter the vampire community without looking like a fool, and more. And so the evidence is out there. And like I said, those that know what's going on in the teenage world, uh, it's just a fact that vampirism and occultism, witchcraft, uh, all kinds of things are taking hold on this generation. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll throw it out to our viewers here, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, you know, um, I'd love to hear what parents might have to say. What are your teens saying? I mean, is this uh, happening in their school? Is it happening in your neck of the woods? Is this uh, an issue? Or is it just, again, uh, you know, something you think that is a fad, it'll go away, don't worry about it, that sort of thing. So, all right, uh, most of our lines open at one 816 Your thoughts? Uh, is this just kind of a Halloween fad and don't worry about it? Or are you concerned, again, that uh, these kinds of things, these movies um, or Halloween, Halloween celebrations uh, can actually lead something, uh, open open up a door, I guess, to the occult. All right. Okay, uh, going to take a look at what people on the street had to say on uh, this whole vampire craze. Why do you think people today, particularly teenage girls, are so attracted to the vampire craze? <laughs> Maybe just because they're vampires. <laughs> it's something that hasn't really been um, in the media very much, and it just sort of sprang up out of nowhere. And just like any other fad or craze, people are just getting really into it. Oh, Edward Cullen, of course. <laughs> I think that teenage girls need more positive influences in their life, and I think that they're actually afraid of things and that that touches the side of them where they're most afraid. Same concept for like NSYNC and boy bands. Once they all, once something, once one person likes it, next thing you know, it's like a, it's like a mob mentality. Everyone loves it. I don't know, they're kind of good looking. Like I know I've, I've watched some of the Vampire Diaries and they have some pretty good looking vampires on there. So maybe that's why. Mm, I don't know, maybe they like that dark, dark humanity or dark side of people. Like I really have no idea. <laughs> 
I think it's it's something to do with this something you can't have and mortality and immortality. So I think it's just girls look at that and vampires are typically seen as being handsome. So I think it's just something you want and you can't have. So. Oh, vampires are big and hulky and sexy and they'll take you in and protect you and stuff like that. And so I think that especially teenage girls who are looking for that kind of thing and that kind of male role model and that kind of like person that they want to be with, I think that has a lot to do with it. Interesting. Heard that come up a couple of times. Uh, role models and also the desire for girls to be um, protected. And, and I think, boy, there's a message for parents as well, right? I mean, man. Fathers, man, you need to be out there making sure your girls know their love, know they're appreciated and cherished, and know that they're protected. And that might, in itself, be a great protection against any involvement in that kind of stuff. Um, Steve, your thoughts? Yes, I've got a lot of thoughts. And, you know, the whole idea of, well, the lure of the vampire is definitely very strong, but the idea of there being good vampires who can protect you, mm -hmm. uh, this is really just an, a, new, a new development. It used to be that the vampire imagery was very evil and dark and sinister, you know, yeah. predators of the night. Yeah. But as a result of Twilight and, uh, and True Blood and the Vampire Diaries, uh, vampires have been given a facelift. And now the heroes, like uh, Robert Pattinson, who plays Edward Cullen in the Twilight series, you know, he's the good guy. He's got a conscience. He, he yep. protects Bella. He wants what's best for her. At one point, he breaks up with her because he knows that he's not good for her soul. Hmm. And so, and then he finally comes back to her because he can't resist her. And, and these, you know, this is new. And so the whole vampire image has been given a facelift. It is very appealing to this generation, okay. especially yeah. to young girls. And mm -hmm. uh, what they don't understand is that there is a mastermind behind the scenes that is working to lure them into the darkness. And I can document that and, uh, you know, before we're done, I want to talk about where the whole Twilight saga originated from yeah. because it's quite spooky. It, it is actually yeah, pretty fascinating. I, I do want to come back to that as well. Uh, real quick before we take any phone calls, and again, uh, lines open, one 816 I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Would you send your kids to a vampire movie? Uh, and again, I'm not going to condemn you if you do. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts, your opinions on that. I mean, I, I'm, I know there's a, a lot of Christians who do send their kids to these kinds of movies. I'd like to hear your thoughts, uh, why you're okay with that, and uh, uh, those of you who don't and why you're, you're, you're against it. Uh, your, your thoughts, uh, I know I'm guessing, Steve, you're, you're, you're going to say, uh, you know, don't send your kids to uh, the vampire movies, right? Yes, that's right. I would okay. say, don't go. Uh, you know, there's more to this than meets the eye. And let me go back to how Twilight originated. Uh, most people don't really know this, but it started on a dark night of June 1, 2003, where a young Mormon woman went to bed and she had a mysterious dream. And in this dream, and she describes this, Stephanie Meyer, right on her website, she says, I woke up from a very vivid dream. In my dream, two people were having an intense conversation in a meadow in the woods. One of these people was just your average girl. The other person was fantastically beautiful, sparkly, and a vampire. They were discussing the difficulties inherent in the fact that, A, they were falling in love with each other, and, B, the vampire was particularly attracted to the scent of her blood and was having a difficult time restraining himself from killing her immediately. When Stephanie Meyer woke up from this dream, she later confessed, and I'm quoting her, she said, all this time, Bella and Edward were quite literally voices in my head that simply would not shut up. So she had a dream, and then she was compelled by voices in her head to start writing out the Twilight series. Yeah, that, and that's that should, where it started from. That should so, give you a few yeah. warning flags, right? Well, to me, yeah. And not yeah. only that, but later on she had a second dream where the vampire boy appeared to her, and he terrified her, scared her to death, rebuked her for sanitizing the script that he gave her, basically said that, uh, I do drink human blood. You got it wrong. I'm not happy. And Stephanie Meyer said that she was, she was terrified by this uh, ghost of this vampire boy. And so when you put the pieces together, uh, it's not a good omen for heavenly inspiration at all. Yeah, it's interesting. I know it's even caused some uh, controversy within the Mormon Church, of course, because of her Mormon connection there as well. Uh, you know, so there. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, that's right. Really and, and not only so, that, but there are there is a Mormon uh, theology that is woven into the series very oh, right? uh, subtly. Okay. But the first Twilight book has a picture on the cover of two tempting hands holding forbidden fruit. And when you turn to the, to the fourth page, there's a Bible verse that comes right on the right on the page by itself that says, "But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil." 
evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat, you will surely die. That's from Genesis 2.17, right at the beginning of the Twilight series. And the reason why this is in there, and the reason the theme of Twilight basically is that Edward, in spite of the fact that he's a good guy, he's still a vampire, he still has a wicked side to him, and that he represents forbidden fruit. And Bella is tempted to, to be in this relationship, which means to eat the forbidden fruit, which right. she eventually chooses to do, and she finds happiness at the end of the road. And that is Mormon theology. Mormon theology teaches that uh, Adam and Eve's choice to eat the forbidden fruit was actually God's plan, and it resulted in happiness uh, down the line when humanity can overcome evil with good. And Mm. that's the message of Twilight, that happiness comes through eating forbidden fruit, but that is really a diabolical message according to the Bible. Yeah, that's a real mixed message in that one, for sure. That's exactly Uh, right. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's good mixed with evil. That's what Edward Cullen Cullen represents. And uh, I, I tell, you know, young people, don't eat that fruit, stay away from it. All right. Uh, I, I tend to agree, uh, but uh, maybe your audience doesn't. I'm not sure. Let's go to some phone calls. one 816 Michael from Ontario. Hi, you're on the air with us, Steve Wolbein. Morning, Paul. Steve? Yes, hello. Mm-hmm. You could give me a moment here, Paul. Um, Steve, you sound like my kind of dude, boy. <laughs> no compromise. I was saying yesterday, no compromising. That's, that's my conviction, no compromising, especially when it comes with the devil. Amen. You know, because uh, most evil usually comes in the form of a frog in the boiling water syndrome. It yeah, you slowly appears, turn, you turn know, the heat. Yes, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. we, we, have to, we have to avoid anything that looks like light, and it isn't the true light. That's and, right. and, you know, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be legalistic here, but, uh, you know, regarding this series and in, any other entity other than God's kingdom, uh, the question that has to be asked, how many apples does it take to spoil the barrel? Right. Uh, now, you're not saying you can never watch a secular movie, but you're saying in this particular case, mm, goes too far? Well, know what doors you're, uh, you know, you're potentially opening yourself up to. If it looks like light, but it's not the real light, I mean, you know, we've got to be careful here. So, um, you know, it's just the okay. same with the Harry Potter series, all this stuff. And, with, you know, like I was saying yesterday about Halloween, let's not even open the door. Uh, you know, if, mm-hmm. if it uh, walks like a duck, sounds like a duck, uh, he probably is, you know. Yeah, that's okay. right. That's exactly right. And, and, and we need and to re- realize that the devil's strategy is to take something evil and make it look good. He exactly. did it in the Garden of Eden. He duped Eve and said, look, this fruit is just delicious. It's good for you. It'll open your eyes, and you'll be like God. And he's been doing this all throughout history. He transforms himself into an angel of light, and he takes the dark, sinister things of sin, and he gives them a facelift, makes them look pleasant, fun, happy, good, puts some good things <laughs> in them like a hook that has a worm on it and the trout comes along and sees the good worms and worm and takes a bite and yet he's hooked and that's the way the devil works yeah imagine uh uh you know media and movies influencing people's behavior who would have thought that's right. And, you know, yeah. I tell you, one of the biggest arguments that I get is people say, uh, hey, it's just fiction. It's just a story. Yeah. But mm-hmm. my response is that a story can influence an entire generation. Jesus, when he was here, his primary method of communication was telling stories because he knows that stories are powerful in their ability to affect human lives. And mm-hmm. so it's fiction. That's right. But fiction can mold a generation, and it's happening. Go on, brother. Okay. You're doing right. a great job here. I, I haven't, uh, I mean, I'm sure this rest of the program is going to be very interesting, but uh, I really appreciate where you're coming from. And like I said, you're my kind of guy. No compromise. Don't even open the door a crack. Let's stop making excuses of why we're playing the game. You know, it's not that bad. We're not dressing up like, like you know, the other people, but you were, we're still playing a game. So Thank you. And pray for us, day. please. We all need a lot of prayer. Yes, sir. All right, Michael. Appreciate uh, the call there. Uh, Thank again, you, brother. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, our lines open though at one triple eight eight one six twenty five forty five. Love to hear from somebody who uh, doesn't agree with Steve here on this one. And uh, and I'm curious, Steve, uh, uh, how much uh, a disagreement uh, you get, uh, whether it's from secular circles or from uh, uh, Christian circles. Because I, again, I I know there's lots of people who do disagree with you because uh, uh, they're going, you know, hey, look, look, our kids went to see it and they're not vampires. Nothing's changed. Everything's the same. Yeah, I 
I, it, I do get more disagreement from secular circles uh, within the Christian world. It's, it's pretty divided. There are those that see nothing wrong with Twilight, think that we can use it for God. Uh, but then there are those like the last caller who just, you know, they see right through that and they say, hey, let's not mess with the devil. You know, if you give him a, a toehold, he'll take a foothold and then he'll have a stronghold. And the Bible says abstain from even the appearance of evil. And the, and the classic question, what would Jesus do? Do you yeah. think that Jesus would be spending hours and hours reading vampire romances and watching these vampire movies? And let me say something else here. I've got a, a quote from Melissa Rosenberg, who is the screenwriter of all the Twilight films, uh-huh. and she told her fans on her Facebook page that the next movie is going to have plenty of blood and sex and feathers in that film. And so, you know, parents, if you're concerned about morality, I mean, this is the screenwriter of the next Twilight movie, and she said, there's going to be blood and sex in it. Is this really what we want, you know, our young people to be uh, putting in their minds? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm, I, I personally wouldn't, uh, you know, send my kids off to something like that for sure. Uh, let me ask you real quick, though. Uh, one, one thing that does happen around Halloween is there's all kinds of um, well-intentioned, uh, you know, get-togethers uh, w- with uh, teenagers or, or uh, preteens, that sort of thing, family fun, uh, right? Uh, and you send your kids off, you don't even know what they're watching necessarily. Um, any thoughts on that? Any, any words of caution? I mean, is it okay to have any kind of Halloween celebrations, or are you saying nada to all of that? Uh, yeah, ha- Halloween is a very dark holiday. I mean, the symbolism is full of things that are of darkness, death, skeletons, witches, uh, vampires, the things of the night. Now, I do think that as Christians, we should provide wholesome, uh, godly alternatives for our young people that will give them something to do. Many okay. churches have harvest festivals. They yep. have wholesome mm-hmm. gatherings where they have mm-hmm. Christian music, and, you know, they're focused on Jesus, and I think that we should do that. I was on a, a show just a couple of days ago, a Christian rock station, and, uh, and I strongly appealed to the, the teenagers that to make Halloween a, a time of recommitment of your life to Jesus Christ, that you're mm-hmm. going to stay away from the darkness and follow the, follow the light and be 100% on the Lord's side. That's my take. Okay. All right. So you're not necessarily against uh, some alternative kind of celebration. No, sort of I thing. think we should but, have because, okay. you know, young people need something to do, and we should provide something better than what the devil is providing. And we shouldn't be mixing the things of God and the things of the devil. That's how we got into this mess in the first place, the tree of the knowledge of okay. good and evil. It's a All mixture. Right. It's a blend. And God okay. wanted Adam and Eve to stay away from it. The Trouble with Twilight. It's available at avoidtwilight.com. All right, Steve Wolberg uh, talking about this. Uh, do you think he's over the top, or uh, do you agree with him? Let's go to Susan from uh, Nova Scotia. Hi, Susan. Hi, uh, yes, I agree with him. Um, I was just saying uh, to the lady earlier that I had been praying that God would rise up through the media and uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> to make movies and things, that, you know, addressing, addressing the darkness, how it is deceiving, how... Um, it is as posing as light to lure the people. And just like you're saying, and, you know, Halloween time, I was even thinking, you know, instead of uh, shutting off your lights and locking your door type thing, mm-hmm. why not, I see these different things with pumpkin men and all this, and they make it like a tourist attraction, why not make a scene or something to do and deal with seed time, harvest time, something to do with the Bible, biblical verses, uh, so that the light can shine in the darkness? Hmm. Um, type. That's just my opinion. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Use every opportunity, though. Anyway, uh, you're, you're okay with that? People. Yes. Have yes. Uh, the Bible says, "Make the most of every opportunity, for the days are evil." Exactly. So yes, we should make the most of these opportunities and try to lead people to Jesus. My book, "The Trouble with Twilight." Uh, It's not a dark book, but it does expose what Satan is doing, but then it points to the light. It's filled with with love and with goodness and with something better, trying to appeal to this generation of young people that there is a much greater love than that of Edward and Bella, and it is the love of the Father and the Son in giving... Uh, Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. Vampires take blood. Jesus gave his own blood. He sacrificed his life. And his love is eternal. And that's what my book, The Trouble with Twilight, offers to this generation of teenagers as something uh, much better than what Hollywood or Stephanie Meyer or any dark dream has to offer. All right. Appreciate exactly. you. Exactly. Exposing the lies with the truth. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. I appreciate your, uh, your input, Susan. Thank Thanks you, Susan. That. 
Okay, lines open at one 2545 uh, um, Your thoughts on this? Again, is Steve over the top, or uh, uh, do we need to be aware? Do you do you limit what your kids can watch? All right, would you let them watch something like uh, this uh, Twilight uh, movie series? Okay, uh, one 2545 I wonder if anybody's ever uh, put up. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you often see, you know, dead bodies sort of thing, you know, mannequins, right, put up all kinds of death scenes at uh, Halloween. I wonder if anybody's ever put up a crucifixion scene just to see what people would say if they'd start asking questions, of course, about the death scene. And then, of course, you can tell them about the resurrection that happens afterward. I'd be really curious if anybody's ever done that. Uh, here's an email, um, uh, sorry, from um, uh, Manitoba. My 20-year-old daughter is into this thing now obviously she's 20 years old i guess you can't you know tell her what to do but she says uh she says hey it's just a silly love story so how can i get through to my daughter that this isn't something that she should be toying with uh how do you, I mean, yeah that's a it's a good email actually because it's it's hard to come across i guess uh, as maybe you know not being a nutcase by saying you know hey you know, this, this is this is dangerous and then they're looking at it going well what it's just a story that's right. And, and, and let me clarify that most of the young people that are into Twilight, that's exactly what they see it as. They, they are, they're attracted to the love story between Edward and Bella, and, uh, you know, they're just, brought, they're just drawn into the series, and they don't really see anything wrong with it. And, and I recognize that, but there are many things wrong with it that they need to have their eyes open to. And so uh, my advice is for parents that have exactly that same question is to, you know, send your young pe- your young person, your daughter, your son, say, hey, check out avoidtwilight.com. Just check it out. And when they go on the website, they'll see the book, The Trouble with Twilight, and they can download the first chapter for free. Uh, they can just do it right there on the website, and they can just check it out. And as they read it, I think they'll be drawn into this book as well. Uh, I've spoken on this subject many, many times, not just on the radio and television, but also in front of teenage audiences. And a lot of times these kids are just, they're wide open, you know, and they just go, wow, I, I never thought of that before. I didn't know that the series originated in a dream. I didn't know what the Bible says about, about drinking blood. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they just... And right. then their eyes are open. They say, hey, I'd like to check out that book. And so that's what they do. And it's a witnessing okay. tool to share Jesus. We're not pounding people on the head. Like I said, we're right. not running around with stakes trying to drive them into yeah. the hearts of Twilight fans. You know, we're, we're taking a sensible approach. And a lot of young people are very interested in checking out what you've got to say on this. And they'll read the book. And the responses mm-hmm. have been very positive. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's a good tool, I think, for something like that. And it's a, not a huge book, all right, so you can get through it uh, reasonably quickly. Um, you know, you know, I tell you what, one, one of my concerns is, uh, uh, Steve, with some of these kinds of movies, is not necessarily the, the, the occult part of it. I mean, that, that is a concern as well, but I think a lot of Christian kids would say, you know what, we know enough about this, we're not going there. But uh, there's another underlying message there that I mentioned earlier in the program, that is the whole uh, infatuation thing with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. And uh, that's uh, that bothers me. I mean, you know, I can't live without you, right? We see this kind you're of right. thing. Uh, I'm thinking, oh, man. Uh, yeah, not, you're not, exactly right. Paul, when uh, in the second book and movie, uh, Edward breaks up with Bella because he knows he's not good for her, and she she falls apart. She she tries to kill herself. I mean, that's not a good example for teenagers. And then finally, when uh, when they meet again, she confronts him and she says to him, "I know why you left me. You left me because you're concerned about my soul." And she said, "I don't mm. care about my soul. You've got my soul anyway. I want you more than my soul." Mm-hmm. Now, what kind of a message? is that for teenagers. I had a young person email me and she said, you know, this is much more dangerous than occultism. She said the whole idea that you should devalue your soul, your soul's not important, you know, yep. follow the, mm-hmm. the desires of your heart above your soul. Uh, she, she saw right through that. This was a 20-something girl. And she said from a Christian perspective, wow, this is a bad message. Yeah, no, well said. I mean, uh, we, yeah, we need to wake up and smell the coffee on that one for sure. All right, some lines open again. Uh, 1-888-816-2545. Uh, you're welcome to agree or disagree on that. Uh, an email here uh, on Twilight, not just affecting teen girls, but uh, this uh, viewer says, I know many adults are fascinated by the whole thing as well. Stay up, in fact, hours at night to get their hands on the new book when it comes out or wait in lines for hours to see the most recent movie. It's like they're addicted to it. And I guess it's like the same thing, like the Harry Potter movie, that sort of thing, where you get the Star Wars uh, fans, and they will line up for hours to see this thing. It's definitely got a hold of people. Uh, no two ways about it. And the next movie is coming out, uh, what, in the, in, is it in the summer? Or? It's in 
2011 sometime. Uh, okay. They haven't announced the exact date yeah. yet, to my knowledge, but it's coming. They're taking the fourth movie and making it into two parts, just like the seventh Harry Potter movie is going to go out in two parts, because okay. they're making so much money on this, they want to uh, keep the keep the dollars rolling in. Mm-hmm. And so there's a profit motive behind this, and my biggest concern is that there are spiritual forces working behind the scenes. Okay. I'm completely convinced of this. Like I said, the whole series started in a dream, and then in the second dream, Edward became very sinister and uh, scared Stephanie Meyer to death. And these are not signs of the Holy Spirit or of angels of God, but of the demonic. And the demonic is very, uh, they're smart, you know, demons and Mm -hmm. evil angels are tricky. They're smart, they're subtle, they know what they're doing. They've been around for a long time. And teenage girls, you know, who just get caught up in the love story, they don't know who they're dealing with behind the scenes. And that's my biggest concern. Okay. Uh, let's take another phone call for you, Steve. Uh, Adrian's on the line from Ontario. Hi. Hi, Steve. Yes, hi, Adrian. Um, I just wanted to call in because uh, your topic kind of caught my attention. Uh, I run a youth center, mm-hmm. and uh, we've seen kids go absolutely crazy over this series, whether it's just reading the books or whether it's watching the movies. And uh, there's been, and it's been, it's not just kids; it's adults as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been such a huge thing that it's caused uh, some of our friends in our Christian circles to really wonder if there's some kind of a, a demonic curse or, or spell. There's been some circles that talk in that kind of way, and, and I was just wondering your take on that. Yes, I believe that's exactly the case. Uh, there's a Christian school not far from where I live where the uh, the school board principal emailed me not too long ago, and he said, you've got to come and talk to our kids. And what happened was right in class, a 14-year-old girl fell down in class and was convulsing for two hours, possessed, demon-possessed with the devil. And the, and the students and the teacher, you know, they just kind of freaked out, and they prayed. They found all the Bibles they could find because this was a Christian school, and they prayed and prayed and prayed. And after two hours, her face relaxed, and the evil spirit left her and come to find out that a lot of those kids were reading the twilight series and one of them was getting Uh, involved in the occult and when the principal found that out he got a hold of me and he said steve please come and talk to our kids and so you're exactly right adrian that there there is the demonic behind the scenes and most people have no idea what's really going on but satan knows what he's doing okay steve uh uh, sorry uh, adrian uh your experiences with uh, young people are they are they going to to watch this stuff or what uh, yeah, and, and like I said, it's not just it's not just the young people. I've, I was surprised to see that even adults that that get into this series mm-hmm. are just yeah. But you're you're saying Christian adults as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's whoever an addictive allows craze. To, That's what it is. Get into this series. Uh, it it goes from the first book to they have to get their hands on the second, and and they that's all they think about. That's right. And, and, and let me say something else. Robert Pattinson, who plays the role of Edward Cullen, uh, he's the vampire boy. He's a British actor. He has publicly acknowledged that the Twilight books have a power that have affected him. They've affected his hmm. his, uh, his personality. He's, he's hmm. stated this publicly. Okay. So, I mean, the guy's innocent. He's just trying to, you know, he just was casted in a role, and he's just riding the wave, And as is Kristen Stewart, uh, the girl that plays Bella. But like I said, you know, Robert has admitted that there is some kind of a power in these in these books, and um, I'm just very concerned that we need to close okay. these doors and provide something better. All right, appreciate your call, Adrian. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, I know there's probably viewers again thinking, "Man, you are one nutcase, Steve." Uh, well, hey, we've got you, three you know, callers on but, my side so far. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm just saying. I'm real. I'm sure there's people thinking that, you know. But of course, we do see uh, in Scripture where, where the demonic realm is real. Now, I, I don't think for that you for a moment are saying anybody who goes to see the movie is, you know, uh, you know, condemned to hell or no, anybody who sees the movie that. And or I'm not read the. That every boy or girl, yeah. every teenager that reads the Twilight book or watches the movie is going to rush out and join a vampire coven. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but but there is a trend that is growing, and it's a dark trend, and it is connected to Twilight. And I uh-huh. see Twilight as uh, sort of like occultism 101. You know, it's a gateway, and it's not for everybody. They don't go that way, but mm-hmm. many of them do, and that's the big problem. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand the concern. I mean, uh... I just personally, with with my children, I don't want to open up any doors uh, for them. By the way, what, what's the movie rating on that uh, anyway? Is it uh, PG? I believe it's PG. That's okay. right. PG thirteen. Right, I, I think or... so. And it's you know it's presented as something that's entirely wholesome. And the media, okay. of course, you know, 
that they don't know what they're doing. I mean, whatever's coming out of Hollywood, you know, these guys, they're not aware uh, of, of the battle between God and the devil. They don't know anything about Ephesians chapter 6 that says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But Christians need to know this, and we mm-hmm. need to be studying mm-hmm. our Bibles, and we need spiritual discernment to recognize what the devil's up to, to close those doors and be on the side of Jesus Christ. Okay, well, here's an email challenging you on that. It says, so what's so wrong with this, Steve? Isn't it just fantasy? We watch fantasy movies all the time, and just just for entertainment, just that. Uh, no one uh, is claiming that this is real stuff. Um, so in other words, um, uh, viewers are saying, oh, okay, hold on a second, Steve. Uh, we're Christians. We go to church, um, right? And we're just having some fun. So um, Yeah, I, I've already addressed that, that they yeah. say it's just fiction. So what's worried? why worry about it? There was an article that came out, and it's in my book, uh, from the Canadian press. And it was talking about how teenage girls all over the country are changing their makeup preferences as a result of Bella and Edward. And it said basically that the bronze look is out and the pale look is in, and that teenagers are changing their preferences and they're being bewitched by Twilight, and it's crossing over into their real lives. Now, this is a secular report from the Canadian press. And when I looked at that, I thought that's exactly my point, is that it is crossing over into people's lives and they are being affected by it. And my concern is not uh, the pale makeup so much as it is the devil and occultism and and, uh, what's going on farther down the road. Okay, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Hey, real real quick, with parents, uh, any advice you have on uh, the movie thing? Okay, they're probably getting bombarded, okay? Uh, You know, my friends are seeing the movie. Why can't I see the movie, right? And, uh, well, uh, would you be okay, I guess, with um, parents saying, all right, fine, Uh, we don't want you to see the movie, but okay, let's go to the movie together, and I'm going to show you what's wrong with it, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna analyze it. We're going to talk about it afterward. We're going to take notes and discuss. You know what? Okay, here's some good points. Here's what we need to be watching out for. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't think that's the best option. Okay. I mean, it's uh, it's better than letting the kids go alone. But the best option is to provide something better. It's to send the young people to uh, avoidtwilight.com, have them read the first chapter of the book, and provide something better. Uh, One of the things that our ministry makes available is a book called The Pilgrim's Progress. It's Mm -hmm. a a classic work. It's been around for 300 years. Sure, sure. And and it's, it's fiction, but it's full of powerful, uh, intriguing, and attractive lessons about Christian who leaves the city of destruction, who goes yep. down the narrow road mm-hmm. toward the celestial city. He encounters Apollyon and, and worldly wise men and, and all these different uh, obstacles of the devil, and he overcomes, and he learns lessons about humility and faith in God and mm-hmm. obedience and giving up sin and the importance of the cross of Jesus Christ. And uh, this book is powerful, and it also appeals to young people. And so I think we need to be providing something whole on something better, something powerful that will get their attention and that will point them to the life that they need to be living for Jesus Christ in these, uh, in these difficult days. All right. Steve um, uh, Wolberg with us here. AvoidTwilight.com is the website, and the book is The Trouble with Twilight. Okay, very interesting read. Uh, all right, so uh, let's uh, take some more phone calls here. Uh, Lisa from uh, Alberta, you're next. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Mm-hmm. Yes, hello. Um, hello. Um, yeah, I think that... Um, you're just adding fuel to the fire with this, uh, giving Twilight so much um, credence to young people okay. makes it more appealing. Mm-hmm. I remember my mother told me in 1956 that she wanted to go see Elvis when uh-huh. she lived in Vancouver. Right, yeah. And the fact that she couldn't go see it. And, and there was people saying that Elvis was demonic with the way he was, honestly, the way he was twirling around with his hips. And um, my mom said it made it so much more appealing to get those tickets and to get in there and see them. So you're saying uh, we, we, we say don't touch the paint, they're more likely to touch the paint. Well, I think so. Also, too, it comes down to the parents' responsibility about what you're putting in front of your children and what you want to put into your children. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, it's like anything else. I remember also growing up as a kid, my brother was crazy about Star Wars. Yep. You really look at the Star Wars trilogies, the movies, they're full of all sorts of religious um, subcontexts. But I don't think it took away from his Christianity. Yesterday, Paul, when we spoke about Halloween, I was telling you about how I lost my way and I got into witchcraft. Right. What led me back was the foundation that my parents gave me as a child. That, that's what saved me. It was, it was so strong in me that, that Christ's love for me couldn't let go of me. So it comes down to, I think, watching, again, what your children are watching. 
I, I'm, I'm a strong believer of not putting computers in um, bedrooms for, yep. for kids. We oh, have our yep. computer out yep. in the open. Absolutely. Where everybody can see, you know, what's going on with the computer and... So, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. But uh, now, no, Lisa, so, um, well, l l let's let Steve uh, respond to that. I mean, I th Steve, I'm sure you'd agree with the, uh, well, so much of it I is mean, with the parent, I, I the parent agree response. With some of the things you're saying, yeah. Lisa, and just respectfully, you mentioned that uh, we're adding fuel to the fire. The mm -hmm. fire has already been lit. And as Adrian, who called in a little bit ago, said that these young people are already reading Twilight, and it's a craze that has taken over. And so we need to be addressing this. And, and just because we focus on it, or at least mention it, doesn't mean that we're going to be uh, directing people to it, because if we take that philosophy, then we should never say to kids, don't use drugs because they might want to go into drugs. Don't drink right. alcohol because they might want to become an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just don't agree with that. We do mm -hmm. need to address some of these issues and warn our young people to stay away from things that are dark. And it's true that human nature is fallen and, and the darkness appeals to us. And so there's always a risk that if you point out the darkness that somebody's going to go, hey, I'm going to go check that out. But but if parents are raising their kids me. right and showing them uh, okay. that there is darkness and that if you get into it, you're going to get burned and you're going to lose your soul and stay away from it, you know, then hopefully they'll okay. listen to a sober warning. All right, Lisa? Sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting. Well, I mean, my understanding that is that Twilight is a work of fiction. Um, I can only speak for myself and also my children. At a young age, they grasp the idea of, of what is real and what isn't. I mean, there might be some people that actually do really drink human blood, but as far as I know, that the only person that can raise the dead would be the Lord. So yes, that's that's true. But there's a lot that young people often don't understand the difference between fact and fiction. I mean, I, I mentioned to the last caller the uh, Canadian Press article that talked about all these teenage, teenage girls in Canada that are changing their makeup preferences and they want to look like Bella because her, she has the pale look. And so well, they are yeah. being affected by fiction. Fiction is very powerful. That's why Jesus told stories when he was here is because he knows that stories affect people's lives. Well, the, 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 the thing is, is that with teenagers nowadays, I think they've moved on to this horrible Jersey Shore reality show, and those people are all tanned within an inch of their life. So, <laughs> I, I well, still, yeah, I still yeah, they're being what's happening is this generation around. of young people they're being lured on step by step from one show to another, from one right, book to right. one but movie to a new website to another show, and they're being lured on like the Piper uh, is is just you know playing this pleasant tune, and they're being sucked down into greater darkness, and parents need to stand up, uh, teach the Bible, raise their kids to live a godly life, and to stay away from this kind of darkness. And if we don't okay. do that, we've dropped the ball. All right. Well, Lisa, much, much appreciated your, your opinion here. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, thanks for that. Some disagreement here with our guest, and that's okay. But this, this is show, that's what this show is about. We want to hear all different opinions on this, all right? Uh, you know, I, I think part of this is... Um, no matter where you're at, but, uh, um, you know, when you're talking to your kids, I think uh, one thing we want to avoid is probably going, <gasps> stay away from that, you know, uh, but I appreciate, appreciate the way you're presenting it here, Steve. You're saying, you know, let's talk with our children logically and explain, you know, some of the background of this, that sort of thing, and, and why you're concerned about it. And I think if you have a, a, a good relationship with your kids, you can do that exactly. without coming across as, you know, being a religious nutcase. So uh, exactly. I think you have to be very, very uh, aware of that uh, danger, though, of, of coming across that way. Okay, I'm uh, going to get to some more phone calls here in a moment. Uh, uh, some lines have opened up there as well, one 816 2545 Your views uh, appreciated. Uh, and there's different um, uh, religious views on this issue as well. Of course, uh, some religions do have uh, uh, beliefs in uh, other um, uh, kind of non-human characters, all right? And you look at Wicca and religions like that. We asked a Muslim representative here today, Hussein Hamdani, uh, their views on creatures of the night. In Islam, there's only three types of being. There are angels are creations of God who are who have a task of fulfilling the orders of God. There are humans, human beings, and, and, I'm, and I mean that including animals and whatever, like the things we see on earth. And then there are another category called jinn. The word genius in English, jinns are kind of like ghosts. They are different types of beings. And so there is this concept of jinns that exist. But these jinns are not vampires who suck blood. They're not werewolves who are animals who turn into humans, who turn back to animals, or other creatures of the night. So it's just not present in, in, in Muslim literature or folklore. All right, there you go. Um, your views welcome as well. one 2545 We'll uh, continue on with uh, Janet next. Hi, Janet. Hi. Hi. Hello, Janet. Uh, how are you? Good. We're good. I, I'm, not, I'm not hearing you very well. Oh, okay. Well, we'll try to speak up for you. Fire away. Okay. There. 
Uh, I really am getting a lot out of what you're talking about. Okay. You know, uh, we need to get a bull by the horns, right? Mm-hmm. And fight for our youth. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. And I am a grandmother. Yep. I'm a great grandmother. Mm-hmm. And I'm an intercessor. And I really believe strongly in praying and really standing on the Word of God for our families. Wonderful. And uh, also, uh, I, when I'm praying, I just say, there's people out there praying for their uh, children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. I'm just putting my prayer in agreement with them. And I stand. Is it okay if I share scripture? Uh, yes. Real briefly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, here in Matthew, uh, verse um, in chapter 18, verse 18 and 19 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall bind, whatsoever you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Mm-hmm. Again, I say to you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Mm-hmm. And I'm believing for a strong move of God in our youth in the land. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, 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 like I said, I'm just enjoying this so much because we need to be aware of what's going on out there and how the enemy is trying to get our, our young generations. We need to be aware of that. And um, to stand in faith and not to, not to be in fear, because God right. is on the throne, and he will see our young people see, uh, through. And uh, what I'm praying is that their eyes be opened and that they'll get such a hunger for God and that, that they won't even desire the things of the occult. All right. No, That's wonderful, it. Janet. Praise the Lord. Uh, as a friend of mine used to say, may your tribe increase. Uh, we need, instead of uh, twilight addicts, God needs prayer warriors That's and right. those that are willing to stand up for Jesus Christ and for the cross, no matter what the world thinks. That's I mean, right. it's never been uh, popular to be a real, true follower of Jesus. Jesus was crucified and nailed to a tree. By, yeah. by even by religious people, yeah. and and to follow him, you know, we we may get crucified to some extent in this world, uh, not completely, but you know what I mean. Uh, and yet Jesus rose from the dead, and truth will win, and it will be uh, victorious for those that are on the side of truth at the end. That's right. All right, Janet, appreciate your heart for young people. Thank you, uh, we I'm need uh, the older generation to be uh, praying, praying for them. So uh, thanks for that, Janet. Um, David uh, from Quebec, you're on the air with um, Steve Wolberg. Go ahead. Hi, Paul. How are you today? Good, thanks. Yes, hello, David. Hi, Steve. Uh, was I, did I hear correctly that the girl was convulsing for two hours? Yeah, and, in this and Christian that, school, what, not too far from where I live. That's honor? exactly right. It was a 14-year-old okay. girl right in class, fell down, uh, uh, and she question. was demon-possessed. And demon possession is real. It's described in the Bible. One question. Why didn't anybody think of calling the paramedic? Hmm. Okay. They, they just didn't. I think they recognized that this was a uh, this wasn't a seizure that she was having. It was a it was a demonic event, and they they recognized that, and they they turned to prayer. And Jesus said uh, at one point, "This kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting." And so they prayed and prayed, and eventually the spirit left, and the and the girl's uh, mind came back, and uh, you know it was spiritual warfare. Paramedics wouldn't they'd be clueless on what to do about this. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So, so your, your, your uh, thoughts, David, I mean, you think uh, they dropped the ball there? Or, uh, yeah, I, I kind of think so. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think in a situation like that, I mean, probably the first thing to do would be call the, to call the parents. That's the, what the I child. think. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, you know, um, yeah, I mean, obviously they did discern correctly that it was a, a spirit because, uh, you know, she was fine after the prayer. And uh, you that's know, right. So that's know. right. And, and the school board uh, chairman, the principal, they required all of the parents and all of the students to be there when I came to discuss this with them. Oh, okay. So and parents so it was, uh, it was the Lord yeah. used it for good. And, you know, if it just would have been uh, an epileptic seizure or something like that, I, I think they hopefully would have recognized that. But in this case, that yeah. was not what was going on. Right. Okay. Okay, great. All right, anyway, David. No, hey, appreciate the call, guys. Uh, absolutely. All right. Again, pe- people, you are free to agree or disagree on this one. Uh, we welcome uh, uh, the conversation here. All right. Uh, would you send your kids off to a movie like Twilight? Is it just harmless fun? Or could it potentially open up a door to the, the occult? And again, with Halloween just days away here, um, do you celebrate it all in, in any fashion? Or again, uh, is that something simply we should stay away from? Uh, let's uh, take some more phone calls here again for um, uh, Steve uh, Wolberg. Uh, avoidtwilight.com is the website where you can get the book, The Trouble with Twilight. All right, so some lines open right now, one 816 Randy from BC, hi. Hello there. Hello, Randy. Hi. 
One of the things that we have a problem in society nowadays is we don't recognize that there's consequences to disobedience of God's Word. Hmm. If it's fictional and if it's directing you away from God's Word, there's going to be consequences to that. Hmm. You're exactly right. You know, we just... There's no accountability anymore in society. We have these uh, movies that are coming out that are directing people away from God's Word all the time. And, you know, God will not tolerate disobedience. He will bring down chastement. So we're, yeah, we're surrounded by a very lazy Christianity that doesn't yeah. really study its Bible. Well, that, that, that I think is probably factual. Uh, but uh, let me ask you, I guess, uh, where do you draw the line on, you know, what kind of movies to watch um, and which ones that would, would, would be okay? Because, I mean, there are secular movies out there that, um, you know, we, we do watch from time to time with our family. Others we don't. Uh, you really do have to use discernment in that. Uh, but where, where do you draw the line? Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, well, I think we do need to be very selective, and I think Philippians 4.8 is a perfect guideline. Whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is wholesome, whatever is noble and honest and of a good report, think on these things. And that should be our, our motto. Everything should be tested by Philippians 4.8. Okay. Uh, Randy, your thoughts? As he was deceived in the garden, every generation has to face its deceptions. And we, the generation that we have right now, has to face those deceptions. You know, uh, what's happening today didn't happen 100 years ago or 40 years ago. So this generation now has to come, I agree with what he said in the Philippians, you know, mm-hmm. whatever is true, you know, God's word is truth. You know, we have to screen everything that we do by God's word. Yeah, and, and I, I don't have an absolute clear black and white line to give people. You know, you can watch this movie or you can't watch that movie. Um, but, um, I mean, again, I think God does speak through uh, secular movies at times. Uh, I've been impacted by various ones. But you do, again, have to be selective, and especially when you're involving your children. Uh, all right? Um, yeah, they tend to be more vulnerable to some of these things. And especially when it gets involves uh, fear, um, you know, these kinds of things, uh, or occultic and, and, you know, elements then all the more caution, I think, uh, is, is needed. So, all right, thanks for that. Uh, again, most of our lines open right now, one 816 uh, Let's go to uh, Manitoba and talk to Valentina. Is that right? Uh, hello? Hi, you're on the air with uh, Steve Wolberg. Yes, hello. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I am a Twilight fan. Okay. And I, I really get what you're saying because I'm, I'm Christian too. Mm-hmm. So, so now, uh, after hearing what Steve said, uh, are you still a major Twilight fan, or, um, or are you going to use some caution here? Uh, well, I, I was pretty crazy about it, but um, I stopped because I know that, that, it's, that it's bad. Hmm. That's, well, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're learning Valentina, something here. how old are you? Yeah. I'm 13. You're okay. 13, so you used to love Twilight, but now you realize that your conscience is telling you it's not something Jesus wants you to be watching. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. Well, praise the Lord. Your testimony is, uh, is so powerful and valuable, and I'm so glad that you called this program. Absolutely. You tell your friends about it as well. So what, what, yeah. parts, what parts concerned you? Did it concern you to hear that uh, the, the origins of the movie actually came from uh, the writer hearing voices in her head? Uh, you know, are, are you concerned that there is some um, uh, occultic involvement in it, basically? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Well, do tell your friends that way. Uh, a lot of your friends do watch it? Uh, yeah. Okay. And what do they find so appealing about it? What, what, what's the main attraction for, for young girls? Um, well, probably just, I don't know, because he's a vampire and that, that they think that there is someone that, that can be like that. Mm-hmm. But they have to wake up and realize that there's no one can love them like, like Edward can love them. Only right. God can love you. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the real Edward is Robert Pattinson, and he was out with the guys one one day. And uh, Kristen Stewart, and they're dating. She said, "If you're going to be with me, you better stop acting like that." And he said, "Hey, I'm just being one of the guys." And she said, "Well, you got to stop doing that if you're going to be with me." And so the real Robert Pattinson is not uh, Superman, and Jesus (laughs) Christ is the only one that's perfect and that has a perfect love and gave His life on the cross for our sins. Right on. Valentina, appreciate you being brave to pick up the phone. 
Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah, you calling. Call us, uh, you call us again, all right, to tell your friends where they can uh, get a free download of the first chapter as well, uh, or they can buy the book if they like as well. Uh, avoidtwilight.com uh, is the website there. All right, so thanks for that. Uh, excellent to hear from young people. Uh, boy, John from Saskatchewan, go ahead. Hello. I, um, I really agree with Steve. Mm -hmm. Like I myself, I grew up through the 60s, 70s, and those horror shows, you know, they... They do have a type of uh, demonic spirit to it, you know, and that's the thing. You know, we have to teach our children how to love God and how to worship God and how to be right and how to love people. Now, I don't really agree with this movie. I, I said to my wife when I seen the advertisement on TV, I said, look at this. I said, they're starting to say that these are real. They're not, <laughs> there's no such thing as vampires. Mm -hmm. the, uh, demons are real. There's, you know, it, the whole concept of God is real. You know, what does it say in his word? It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of the air. Mm -hmm. And if we don't teach our children how to worship and how to battle through these things and through these, these, um, areas that they're growing up in their life, if we don't teach them, yeah, they are going to go over to these types of things and start believing in that. You know, that's well, what Satan wants. And the well, thing is, is that, yes, we've got to keep on going and keep on pressing yeah. forward. And believing God is going to do a wondrous work, and I do believe he is doing a wondrous work through these, through, through these times, because these are the times that we're, we're in the end times. And you, sure. You see well, well, yeah, well it's interesting. I, I tell you what, well, yeah, you say we're in the end times, and I think what's interesting as we get closer and closer to the return of Jesus, there's actually, and I think, an increased desire in the supernatural, oh, you're which, right. is, which is fascinating. Now, unfortunately, a lot of it's, of course, not directed toward Jesus. It's just the supernatural. There's all kinds of stuff out there that's not of Jesus that really is uh, supernatural, and it's real. Uh, that's exactly you know, and that's right, what's Paul, a, Satan is pulling out all the stops. He knows he's running out of time, and he's doing everything he can to ultimately, my, my conviction is his goal is to lead people away from the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. Revelation 12, 11 talks about God's people overcoming the devil yeah. through the blood of the Lamb. And this whole vampire craze is directing people to the wrong blood. Yeah, and and well we're said. in a blood battle. I have a chapter in my book called The Blood Battle, and those are some of the real issues yeah. going on behind yeah. the scenes. Very, very good. Well, appreciate the call. I'm going to squeeze one more in here. Uh, I believe this is actually a, uh, a young person. Is that right, Victoria uh, from Quebec? Go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, ever since I've been seeing the commercials and stuff, I knew that something was wrong with it. I never saw the movie, but mm. I could tell that I, okay. I didn't need to know where it came from. I could tell that there was a moral to it and stuff, and now that I heard it and I know more, my friends are going crazy about it, and I'm just saying, like, it's not right. I mean, you could tell. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, you know what? It's uh, the Spirit of God inside of you that I think uh, wakes right. you up Thank to you that. That's right. Thank you so much for your testimony, Victoria. How, how old are you? I'm 12. You're okay. 12. Wow, Paul, we've had a 13-year-old and a 12-year-old mm -hmm. that are, bear, are bearing testimony. And, Paul, I want to say I believe God and the Holy Spirit is using you and this program right now to open up a lot of people's eyes. And I just yeah. I praise the Lord for that. Yeah, we do thank Jesus for that. Well, tell your friends about that too, Victoria, because I'm sure a lot of them do, uh, uh, you know, read the books and watch the movie, that sort of thing. So, again, uh, you know, tell them what you think. I mean, you know, be, be, be bold about it. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks so much for calling us, Victoria. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Thank all, you, Victoria. Yeah, God bless you. Uh, I'm, I'm almost out of time, but I know you want to tell people again about the book, uh, free download, right, at avoidtwilight.com? That's it, yeah, free download, avoidtwilight.com. The book is uh, powerful, eye-opening, biblical, balanced, and it points to Jesus Christ above all. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And it's the love of Christ. Once people see how deep is his love and what he did on the cross for us, uh, you know, the whole relationship between Edward and Bella, it's going to fade away, and Jesus right. will become everything to us. I'm out, of time. I'm out of time, Steve. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week.